Okay, I'm recording, so go ahead. All right, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, first on the agenda is approval of the minutes dated August 10th, 2020. Does anyone want to make a motion to approve? I make a motion that we approve the minutes. Second it. Second. Awesome. All those in favor, say aye. And if anyone opposed, say your name. Aye. 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 Great. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so now we will move on to topics from the floor for anybody who's not on the agenda. I know we have a number of guests on who are on the agenda. Is there anybody? Yeah, before we move forward, Carmen, um, yeah. Doug's trying to log in. So um, can we wait for just a second for him? To yeah, leave? sorry, I totally missed oh, that. No worries at all. Okay, uh, let me mute myself again. John, your iPad says Cynthia on it. Did you change your name in the last month? Changed my gender, Jerry. Oh, really? <laughs> wow, that was fast. <laughs> now there are two Cynthia's in this household. All right. Now her, her email works better than mine usually, so. Hey, John, I don't know if you can say that nowadays, though. What? <laughs> no, gender. You might offend some people. Oh, no, I've done that all my life. That's true. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jerry, how'd you make yours lay down a little while ago? I turned it sideways. Yeah. You I thought you were taking a nap or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, there you go. You filled up the screen now. You guys notice it's smoky outside? Really? Oh, I, thought, I thought it was just fog. <laughs> I thought it was my neighbor still burning. You guys think Might it's bad? Portland. It went over to St. John's Bridge. You can't see nothing. Oh, yeah. I was at a local watering hole last week, and you couldn't even see the river from the balcony out there. Yeah, I thought it was supposed to rain today. It's, it's evening, almost vanished. There's there's hardly any rain coming now. And then uh, they're called Thursday or more now. I mean, there's a percentage, but at one point, they were like over half an inch they thought we were going to get. Now we're going to be lucky if we get quarter of an inch by Friday, I think. So I heard light rain today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Just light rain, but rain. Yes. Yeah. It'll do what it wants to. <laughs> Welcome to Oregon, where the weather's bipolar. <laughs> Was that Doug joining, Sue? You're muted. Yes. Okay. <laughs> be on in just a second. Okay. <laughs> we can see you, Doug. Okay. I think, Doug, you need to unmute on your end. There we go. Not there you here. go. Hello. So the meeting is in progress. We approved minutes already from August 10th. Um, and now we are on to topics from the floor for anybody who's not on the agenda. So if there's anybody who has joined the meeting who's not on the agenda and would like to address the commission, now would be your time. Um, so you can either raise your hand or, or unmute. send me a message. I don't see anybody. And my birthday on the 20th. 
There's somebody talking. Yeah, I'm. Tell me who that is. I don't see anybody. Do you see anything coming through, Sue? I don't nope, see nobody. Anything. There's. I'm. I'm watching the participants list, and I don't see anybody. You know, with a hand up or a yes, okay. a thumbs or anything. Okay. So I'm sending we'll, the number to Walter right now. He's trying to get in. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we will continue forward, I think, and then if there is anyone who's trying to talk and. <laughs> unable to raise your hand or mute or comment chat um if you get it figured out late we will try to give you time to oh, comment there's walter oh. oh awesome okay so i'm gonna move forward to counselor's report so we can keep things moving so doug right. can i can you hear me yep we can yeah, can I pass for uh, and go over the next agenda item and then uh, I'll be set to report. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. We'll Thank jump you. back to it. Yep. If I forget, remind me because I get distracted sometimes. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to move on to new business. First thing on the agenda for new business is the bench donation. Um, so I think we need to unmute somebody. Wendy, are you on? Yes, I'm here. Great. Um, so it looks like we received a request for a donation uh, for a bench with the location of Greycliffs Park. Do you want to give a little bit of background? Yes. So my mom and sister recently passed it was my mom's request to be down by the river in that area and she wanted a bench down there. Um, I'm not picky about like whereabouts, but I just wanted to make something like that happen for them. Great. Sorry about your loss and um, I we in the packet we do have the details of the application and we have the details of the proposed bench type. Um, has everybody had a chance to review that on the commission? And does anybody have questions about that? Thanks. What was that? <laughs> uh, it's probably me, but I don't know. Yep, I think so. Because didn't we have that other bench proposal too for um, the yep. dog park? And were we talking about that? Is yeah, it we had one. To have the uniform, or is there like a certain certain shape that we need to be having, or is each one going to be slightly different? Is the question. I think we had talked about it, and I don't think we've ever come to a conclusion. So I think we're going to keep having this come up as far as donations go. So maybe we can continue to take them as we get them, but it might make sense at this point to come up with a standard, I don't know, this is just me randomly thinking about it, but a standard bench that people can donate for our parks um, so that there are some consistencies. I don't know if that makes sense going forward long-term. But... Berman, uh, did, did, on that last one, didn't we kind of come up with a, a bench template, if you will, uh, uh, that we were going to use at the dog park? I don't know that we came up with a template. We asked a lot of questions about it, and the, I think the one proposed we approved, which was made out of recycled material, and I think the suggestion was to have a concrete slab that it would be placed on for ease of maintenance, but anyone else can chime in, too. Well, I had some... I had why some... don't we make that proposal to Wendy? Uh, to have her see what that is, and maybe that'll fit her needs as well. I certainly Wait. had some pushback on the uh, on the material that was uh, from the Lions Club. They just assumed walk from the whole thing. I should I I should have copied the email and read the email, 
but she says, this is too much bureaucracy. Uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think that, that her, uh, who, uh, the lady who, who sent me that email, who represented the Lions Club, says it's in the best interest because they didn't want a wooden bench made out of wood because they had other materials that they were going to use. And it, it was just like, it wasn't worth their time. And it just got into too much bureaucracy. So uh, I don't think we have enough flexibility in our bench policy. Uh, it's like, it's gonna be this like this, and it's gonna be like that. And it's gonna be so tight that nobody's going to even want to volunteer to give uh, a, a bench to the city. And I, I just think that the policy needs uh, a little more latitude in, in terms of what the parameters are for, uh, the, for the bench. Uh, is it going to be 18 inches high or is it gonna be 16 inches high? what's going to be the degree of angle on the uh, lean back portion. Uh, it's like, come on. I don't know what happened when we, when that was, when that uh, was uh, put into place, but man, it's too tight. When you start getting somebody like the Lions Club saying, uh, forget it. So are we gonna walk from that? I, just, I think that's really not a, a good, really a, a, a good situation to be in with, uh, with us. I think we should listen to the flexibilities. She already came to the council and the council says, yeah, this looks really great. And then all of a sudden she got the application and she says, I'm not, uh, this isn't, we don't fit in this application. So the application so, killed the deal. So it sounds like that's a separate, go ahead, Sue, sorry. Well, first of all, Jerry has his hand up, so I don't know if he wants to comment oh, first, it, but sorry, I have Jerry. kind of an update on that. Did yes, you want I want to comment. I always want to comment. You know that, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have a, a, a couple things about Great Cliffs Park. One thing I, I would like to see eventually is two benches at the top of the trail, not right at the top of the trail, but as you're facing the river off to the right a little bit and have the, the benches at a 45 degree angle or a 60 degree angle each other so people can look out on the marina and look out on Mount Hood and, and downtown St. Helens. So I would, that's where I would like at least two benches to be and then eventually I would like to see some signs up there that, you know, point to Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, and, and, and maybe have some other things. So location-wise, eventually I'd like to see some benches up on top of the trail. I'm not going to let the urban trail go away, guys. Okay. As far as the second thing I wanted to comment on was uh, Jim and Kathy Surstad. They're uh, very involved with the Lions Club. And I've talked to them about eventually, if the parks, the trails and parks commissions wanted to, they would donate a couple benches to put up on top. So, you know, if they go away, then, you know, we would have to go somewhere else for benches. My understanding is, and I think Lynn, you've seen these benches. Yes. Isn't there some benches down at, at Dalton Lake? We have them actually at the yard at Public uh, Works. They haven't been put in yet, but she's do already donated two. So what's your opinion of those? So maybe we need well, to be a little more flexible. What, what's your opinion of those, of, of those, those benches? Those are very comfortable. They're six feet wide. And uh, I don't know what the back is or anything, but I like the idea that they're made out of that Trex material because they're gonna last for years. And uh, they plan on putting them in concrete as well. So uh, they look really nice. Uh, there's one at the uh, 4-H building at uh, the fairgrounds. Um, Master Gardeners up at the uh, uh, demonstration garden, they have three of them. Uh, there's a lot of uh, places in town where people have already received those benches. So I, you know, I haven't, I haven't personally looked at one. I know I should, but I've been told by you and other people that they really are long-lasting. They look good. 
They're comfortable. Uh, you know, we did talk about, I think, last meeting that benches could only be there for a certain amount of time. I thought we talked about that, John. But I think we should make the bench maybe a little more flexible so the, the benches at the Lions Club donates are acceptable benches. Well, the, those are the ones that Lana are talking about. So they're, they're already, they're, they're the ones that are, they're, they're the ones that are not acceptable on the application, but they're acceptable to everyone else. Well, that's just what I just said. Tim has something to comment yeah. on. Can I interject like just so we don't get too far off uh, on this? So the policy, even though it does talk about a wooden bench and it talks about the size of the plaque, et cetera, it also gives an exception to be able to allow other materials um, other styles, just because a lot of the times these were art benches that were donated, like the one in front of City Hall and the one in, at Walnut Tree Park, et cetera. But it, it allows for exceptions to that wooden bench rule. Now, it's probably true that we should look at that policy and update it so that it's a little bit more inclusive of different materials and different styles. But I, um, the gal from the Lions Club uh, uh, contacted uh, Kathy, actually, Kathy Payne, our city recorder, and she forwarded the information to me and she was concerned about this, you know, I don't want to have to deal with a wooden bench, etc. But I pointed out that the policy allows for other types of benches. Um, it's just not that's, it just doesn't call it out specifically. So they, um, she said, great, I'll go ahead and fill out the application. And Sherry, I do believe that they submitted that application for the donation from the Lions Club. Was that submitted today or Friday? Yes. Thursday, I told Thursday. her we okay. next Good. Month. Yeah. So, Good. so they're they're okay with that. Um, going through the procedure, all they had to do was provide the information, and then, it, since it's not an art bench, then this is the the body that would look at that donation. So, on the next parks com, parks and trails commission agenda, that application for that donation will be um, up for review. So, right now, though, we have have the the application for the bench that Wendy is proposing and I think correct, that's correct. what we need yes. to address in the yes. moment and they um, they did look at the 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 bench that the Peterson's donated that was approved at the last meeting um, and they preferred the style that they submitted in the application that you're reviewing today great and has everybody had a chance to look at that and does anyone have questions or concerns about the style or the details if not, I can try and share my screen so we can all look at it and make sure. Yep. So in the ah. packet is the details for this bench. Um, so it has the details of the bench and then it has the feature of the, the plaque um, oh. here. So this is what's being proposed and then um, goes into more detail and then the application. So these are the pieces that we want to confirm if we are good with them, if we approve as is or if we need to make, would like to make adjustments. So we've got the description of the item which are on the following couple of pages or the previous couple of pages. And then the location that Wendy has suggested is Gray Cliffs Park overlooking the river, no specific spot. Um, so I believe Sherry, you informed me that um, there's already benches on the south set, south end and so potentially on the north end of the park um, for placement, um, but it sounds like whatever works best. Does anyone else have feedback on the location or concerns with it being at Gray Cliffs? Um, this, is a, this is a memorial, right? Yes. Essentially. Uh, did they want like is there a reason we're not doing like a more artistic version or? This is just what they requested. Um, and she's on the line if you want to ask a question. All right. I was just wondering if there were like specific, I don't know, some kind of specific imagery or anything that you wanted like um, involved in the production. 
as far as on the plaque? Uh, that or on the bench itself, because like I know Walnut Park has its own little uh, bench that is like shaped like trees and everything like that. And then um, I was just looking and I was just trying to find something that would be weatherproof. And um, I wasn't looking for like something like real pretty or fancy, mm -hmm. just something that would keep in the weather so we could keep it down there. Um, and that's the why I chose that one. It doesn't have to be that one, just something that would keep in the weather is what I was looking for that wouldn't need a lot of maintenance. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah. And you're, you're using tracks? No, I think it was aluminum, wasn't it? I think it said aluminum. Yeah, it's, let me go back to it. I think I'm still sharing. Um, Steel. It's steel with the plastic yeah. coating. Okay. Jerry, it looks like you raised your hand. Sorry, it's a little bit weird of a view because I'm sharing. So. Yeah, um, I have two more two more comments. One's the same as I said last time. I just want to reiterate it. But first of all, the ones that are that are. Walnut Creek, the one that's, you know, down by the City Hall, those were commissioned by the Arts and Cultural Commission. So they were, they were specially made for that. And there are several of those um, around the city that were designed specifically for certain spots. Um, like I said, I think the north part of the park would be a good place to, for the memorial to go. And eventually I'd like to see some benches up on on top with an expanded view area up there because I think it's the nicest view area, public viewing area in all of St. Helens. Yeah, I like your mention of the two benches potentially up there too. And I think maybe that would be something we should plan out so that we have matching benches. So I don't know that this one would be the best candidate. For I agree. So I think this one should be maybe on the north end, Carmen. Okay. Does everyone agree? And Wendy, do you have any objections to that? No, I don't. Okay. Um, and that's where it's facing like the river and the mountains kind of like the north end of, right? It kind of what, where the kayak and the boat, the human powered craft launch is. Is it now what you're talking about that end of the park? Yes, it is. Okay. I think it'd be great down there. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Um, there, there's, a, there's a good, I think what you're asking is there's really a good view of the river there there's really a good view of Sand Island there. I'm not real sure there's a good view of Mount St. Helens or Mount Hood from that location. That is okay. So the other details that we have to be okay with um, in order to make a motion is placement. So place it however they'd like as soon as we could is the note there. And then the term would be, we would like the bench to stay as long as possible and then city to maintain the bench. So those are all very similar to um, conversations that we had in our last meeting with the other donation. Does anyone have concerns with this or any other questions before we move forward with a motion? Just a question, uh, Carmen. Uh, yeah. uh, how long does it take to get the bench and the plaque before it's ready to put in? I will have to defer to Wendy on that. I have no idea. Do you have any that idea, Wendy? Help. Yeah, I do. Um, they said five to seven weeks, which I have not purchased yet because I wanted to make sure it would go through first, but they estimated five to seven weeks after I order it. Okay. Well, works for me. Well, I, do have a, I do have a question or a comment. Yeah, go um, ahead, Doug. I want to take this to the uh, council. This is going to be in a form of a recommendation from the Parks Commission. Is that correct? Yeah, I think we can, if someone wants to make, a, when we're done discussing, if someone wants to make a motion uh, that we have this go to City Council for approval. Okay, and then on that, uh, if, is there on that north end, I've been down there and looked at that quite, quite a bit for the proximity of benches and we have on the south end is a grouping 
And that grouping is work, has worked out really very nicely because you'll see quite often couples sitting down there in a group uh, conversing with each other and whatever, and it becomes a conversational area and a meeting place and all kinds of issues that kind of like fulfill what, where people want to meet. Uh, and, and, it, and it fulfills just more than two people looking one direction. I kind of think that if we design this as, as with the with a concrete slab, so another bench in the future could be uh, uh, included, and another bench as well, maybe three. One looking at Sand Island, one with the uh, proximity of looking upriver, and one looking downriver would give a full dimension of the river, looking straight across, one downriver, one upriver. And it also fulfills the need for a grouping of people who want to meet at that area. And I think the one on the south end works extremely well for that. And I'd like to, I would probably take it a, a step further to make the concrete pad so that it can include a grouping uh, with uh, this one being the center and then possibly two on the side later on if other people want to add a bench then the concrete pad is already uh, poured and there's a place for it. So we don't have benches scattered all over everywhere in the, in the, on Great Cliffs Park. Uh, that's my comment. And okay. I'll kind of like uh, uh, entertain uh, taking that to the, uh, that'd be my comment with the, uh, with the, with the council. Uh, I hope it coincides with uh, what you're thinking about. Thank you, Doug. Um, Howard? Um, I was just, I was like, a little bit of devil's advocate. How much does concrete cost for us to be putting all this concrete out? Is, is it in, a, in the budget for the parks? Where does that um, come from? I love the idea of concrete. Don't get me wrong. I just thought I'd throw that one out there. What is this the going to happen? Yeah. I can tell you, I can tell you for, uh, the concrete's actually pretty cheap for okay. getting that, for, for doing that. The best thing about concrete, it keeps everything stable. It keeps the benches in place so no one steals them. And it's okay. also a maintenance issue for the people who mow around them. They don't have okay. to mow and move benches and all of that. It's a win-win every which way. And it's very okay. inexpensive, Howie. Sounds good to me. Can I'm take, in I'm in can take it out of the knob yell budget? <laughs> <laughs> I still got to. I got to figure out where to put up there. <laughs> oh, yes, John. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. I still want to. Let's, does someone want to make a motion so we can keep things moving? It's already 4.30 and we've got quite a lot make, of stuff to cover. Make a motion that we approve the application for a bench at Gray Cliffs and uh, uh, with the thought of making the pad big enough to accommodate uh, two or three more benches in the future. I'll second it. Great. All those in favor say aye. 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 I, Anyone opposed? Well, do we want to make, do we want to make approval or do we make a recommendation? We make a recommendation council? that goes to city council and then city council okay. will approve. So Wendy, so thank I'm you for, finished. for coming. Um, this would, I believe go on the next um, city council agenda for final approval. And um, Sherry, will you coordinate with Wendy or does Kathy coordinate with Wendy for that? Kathy will do that. Okay. I'll send her all the info and in the application. Okay, great. Uh, Any questions for us, Wendy? Um, no, I don't believe so at this point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Let's see. Next on the agenda, let me get back to that. Okay. So next up we have Michael from Wilsonville Concrete about the native species donation. Uh, hey everyone, first off, I want to apologize. I think I was on the agenda last month and missed the meeting, so I apologize about that. Um, so we have, um, we grow different native species, and so we have stuff like Oregon grape, we have ash, we have pine maple, and a couple other, um, a couple other things. And so um, we've done reclamation uh, 
projects in the past in the city of Wilsonville and also in Yamhill County. And just as we're new to the community, it was something I reached out to Carmen to see if if you guys would have any interest in doing a planting. And that could be big scale, small scale. Um, it could be soon, it could be in the future, um, but just want to make that offer as it's something that we've done in, in other places and have had a lot of fun doing. So, Is this gratis? Yeah, free. absolutely. Yeah, the, tr the trees are absolutely free. I think I'd be happy to help planting, um, but then the, the risk is try to keep them alive uh, after you plant them. So like right now is a really good time, but once you get into the spring, it's a little riskier to, to plant. Yeah, we're hoping to do a bunch up at Knob Hill uh, this fall. We, we had a grant and we've got uh, some money from the Portland Garden Club and it, we're planning this fall to be putting them in so they can have the whole uh, winter to get more established and get all the rain and stuff. And I know the Fifth Street right away would love to have more of your plantings also eventually. <laughs> okay. In the future. What, what would be helpful in terms of um, a, a next step? Or is there someone who would have interest in, uh, and Howard, maybe it's just you reaching out to me at the right time or what, how should we proceed? Yeah, I was going to ask what the process would be as we come up with use cases in our parks where we may want to call on you for um, some plants. What would be the process for us reaching out? Um, what, what you'd like that to look like? Okay, I think that I could maybe after this call send out an email with what we currently have available. Um, and then just if there was ever a request or a project in the future, you could just send me a note asking for what um, is available, then I could share that um, okay. back with, with the group. Would that work, Carmen? I think that, that sounds good. What does everyone else think? Does anyone else sounds have great. questions? No, that sounds, sounds great. great to me. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Yeah, Thank have... you very much, Michael. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So Carmen, I'll send you a list of what we have today and then you guys can look at that. Um, I have a very light pickup. And so like if I were participating, I could bring some of the trees from Wilsonville, but the thing that we probably would need help with is just moving trees from our location in Wilsonville. Um, so I think we could address those details. I just want to be clear that the trees are currently in Wilsonville. Okay, sounds good. And when you send that to me, I can send that out to the rest of the commission um, so that they can review and reach out if they have a need currently. Perfect. Thank, thank you guys so much. And apologies about last month also. I hate saying I'm going to be someplace and then missing it. So. No problem. Thank you for joining, okay. Michael. Yep. Take care, guys. Thank you. You too. Yep. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next up we have Rachel for the Community Input Survey. Hi, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Committee, for inviting me. Um, I'm not sure, I was thinking about sharing the presentation that I shared with Council last month. I don't know if I can co-host and do that, or I can, I'm happy to talk it through in the abstract. What's the best way to do that, Sue, Sherry? Any ideas? D depends what you want to see. If you want to see um, the presentation or if you just want to talk about the survey information that was in the packet. Depends on what the commissioners want to do. We can make Rachel a co-host if you, if you want to see mm -hmm. that. Let's make Rachel a co-host and then she can share what she'd like to share as she's talking. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Oh yeah, as soon as I can find her on my list here. Thank you. Rachel, where are you? Hi. Where are you? Call from a chill car. Yeah, there you are. Uh, technology. I know, right? <laughs> okay, you should be live. Okay, let me 
Here we go. I have so many things open on my desktop. Here we go. Okay, so if you can see, can you see my slideshow? Yep, we can see. Thank okay. you. Wonderful, and I will be very brief. I really just appreciate the opportunity to be here and check in. Um, thank you for your service. This committee really does it. It's a really wonderful thing. You really get it done. It's always impressive. Um, okay, so go through the mission, of course. And the mission of this committee is such a perfect dovetail with the overarching mission of the city. This is about high quality of life. This is about a safe and healthy environment and leadership that's open and responsive, working for the benefit of all. It's, you're doing, you're doing it, so it's great to see. Um, little overview of the survey, uh, it does, it was open in January and February of this year. We distributed via web link, social media, email invitations. I was also really lucky to get invites to go to fellowship hours and to meet people at community events. As we know, then COVID, so that happened, but uh, it was a really, really good opportunity to chat with folks about what they love about our city. Um, and I had hoped to distribute the results earlier and everyone has been very gracious and patient, but with a global pandemic. So we had about 5% of our population who responded. The impressive thing was of those responding, almost three quarters left comments and took the time. This wasn't a three question, it, it took some time to do. So it really shows a lot about our community. And there was a really good range of participation. So we have folks who are new to the community, some of those mid range, how long have you lived here folks, and then people 21 years plus and generations. And folks are always happy to, happy to share that perspective too. Uh, another great thing, the demographics who responded was really broad. We even got to some of these younger folks and the under 35 year olds, young people with young families, people that are new to the area. So felt really good about the distribution. Always wish more people had participated, but we did talk about employment status if folks were working or volunteering or fully retired. As we know right now, our city is made up very much of single family detached housing and that is reflected in the response. So I think you can see a lot of your mission reflected by our community. What do you most like about li living in St. Helens? This is your work. This is the nature. This is the small town feel. This is the river. This is our location. So it, as a St. Helens resident, um, I agree. <laughs> The, the key takeaways, and a lot of this was what I shared with council just to provide that broad overview. Um, our public works does a fabulous job delivering core services. Most folks don't think of city management when they turn on their tap, but that clean water comes out is a really core part of our function. Um, customer service provided by city employees was also high. Uh, and the area where we have the most work to do and the most communication to do is the effectiveness of economic development efforts. So a note on some of these responses, I included some of the neutral with the positive responses in many areas. And these are the folks, I call it the, the meh, like I don't, I'm not in any way dissatisfied, I just don't have a strong feeling about it. So you'll see that in the next couple of slides. Um, here we are with the core services. And as you can see, yeah, we can certainly, there are areas to improve that economic development efforts. And I always feel like we can improve communication. So sharing this and having you all as champions is a really important part of that. Just for your information, people were, had very positive responses about our police department. And you're usually not there on your best day when you're interacting with the police. So just a shout out there. Um, and I'm, this is all, all available for you. With the library, lots of excellent and good responses. And you'll see many folks who, 
who do not use some of the services available, so who were respondents. Here we go, Parks and Trails had very high ratings for overall, also the ability to find location information, landscaping and maintenance. Some of the hardest things to get a handle on are some of the facility issues, right? The, that overall condition and maintenance of bathrooms, that's an area where you can improve, you know, we can improve very much, but it's really one of the hardest to, to do. Um, I'd be interested to see, I'm interested in the next iteration of the survey because this was pre-COVID and we have been cleaning, so you can attest to all of the increased cleaning that's been happening, that type of thing. So I'd be interested to see it's, it's important to keep that lens though when you're looking at this. Um, so if you note that ability to find a park location, we then asked how many city parks you know of? And I was very proud of our mayor in session actually knows the number of city parks because as you can see, there are very few folks <laughs> who, who do know that actual number of city parks. And there are a couple that always get me. Civic Pride, for example, is one. Or I forget that the island is actually City Park, you know? <laughs> so it's, there are 13 city parks in St. Helens and it is quite a, quite a big job and quite a lot of ground to cover. I believe, and Sue, correct me, it's what, 135 acres of park that we have. So, and this, I do not believe, and you can correct me, includes the new Dalton Lake Nature Preserve. So there's more acreage. I'm not sure. It doesn't include. It doesn't include uh, not as much to take care of. <laughs> yeah, and then the visitor, the the visitor ship. Um, last six months, and I also want to thank you, Chair Chair Dunn, for for helping me with these questions and for really getting a format and information that's going to be useful to you as a group that how many times do you visit the park in the past six months? You'll see, you know, you've got the, the very infrequent users and then, you know, kind of the middle end folks. And then you have this 21 times or more that we've got folks who spend quite a bit of time in our parks. This also, I would like to see the COVID impacts. <laughs> staying home, staying in family groups, and the activities of our library and rec program happening in our parks. I am really curious as to what those impacts have been. So I will breeze through the rest of this presentation and then we can go to your section in particular, if that's helpful. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, the recreation program, as you all know, um, it's been it's been a great addition and folks are really grateful and see a lot of value in that programming. It's fabulous that now with the shift, so much of that programming is happening in our parks. Our elected staff and leadership. This is the area where we've got work to do. Certainly how we communicate and how we really listen and share information with the public is something that we've got some growth. There's, there's lots of room for growth here. Um, and speaking of growth, uh, that the ones that we find folks are dissatisfied or neutral about, the managing and planning for growth and our economic development future. These are the places that we've got the most work to do. We do see folks feel like they're good opportunities to participate in government. And as you know, the function of this committee is one of those really vital ways to have functioning committees reporting to council and bringing recommendations forward. It's a key part of who we are and, and how, we, how we will grow. So. Yep, the overall operation is strong. And this, if you see that like a second to last point, working to develop and preserve high quality of life. This is really about, about our, our built environment and about our natural environment in many ways. Yes, and these are certainly opportunities for all of us, um, kind of less so in this committee, but you know, promoting the economic health and managing and planning for growth. 
And this is an important conversation when it comes to parks and to what people value in their city, right? We saw what you like most that the connections to nature, connections to the river, and the feel of our community are really important. So thank you. And uh, very instructive when we talk about communication and how we reach out to folks, how we, how we share everything from a press release to a call for a survey. Um, it's like the city website and then our local print and also the rise of social media is reflected really well here. Very few people know that Cable Channel 29 exists and we have not been using it in this format. So I wonder what this is going to look like as we've gone. As you know, these are broadcast live on our Facebook channel. So I'm interested to see that shift and how people engage with us as a municipal government. So. And reminders that your local media is important. Your local print is really important and to keep those relationships strong. And here are the greatest challenges facing our city. Delivering services, jobs, economic development, managing growth, like, and of course, traffic is a favorite, a favorite one for folks to, to voice concern about. Um, I think we, we can't, we will move forward. We've got great opportunities. And I think a lot of the, the attitude piece, the managing growth, and the really preserving our livability as a city is, is something to really keep at the forefront of, of our mind as we plan for the next several years. So, yes, and planning for the next several years. Um, concurrently, as this was opening and closing, council came together uh, in a series of retreats and really took the mission to heart and really did some very difficult work to evaluate our goals and evaluate where to put the limited resources that we have. Um, really emphasizing putting the resources into places that best serve the needs and aspirations of our community, building partnerships, being transparent and accountable, and we've got opportunities to really increase our communication and dialogue, right? Engagement's a two-way street is something that I, I always like to remember. So happy to have that strategic work plan to guide our work. And I'm really proud of our council and proud of our staff that's, we've shifted the way we report, we've shifted, we've tried to increase some efficiencies even in meetings and to be more accountable with our action sheets. So it's, we're coming along. And here are the five city goals outlined by council. The work of this committee really ranges across all of the goals. I mean, we think about safe and livable environment, but it's really your work and your mission flows through all of these, right? It's about your structure and being effective as a committee. You do an amazing amount of community engagement and so much of that happens in our parks and on our trails. <laughs> Also, as you all know, this goes with economic development. We all want to live somewhere where that's a nice place where we can recreate outdoors, where we can feel that sense of community. And I know that you are also masters of planning and you're always thinking down the road and to see the things that are unfolding now that have been in the works and how this actually comes into being is a really cool thing. And I think that's about it for, for the presentation that I wanted to share with you. Um, I can, I will stop sharing, but just to, to look at the sheet that was included in the packet too, if I can get there quickly. I did include all of the comments for your use. Don't, don't take them, you know, don't, Take, take what you want and don't get too hung up on things. Everyone's, everyone has particular areas that really get to their heart. So I will just encourage you to zoom out a little bit. Some of these aren't even for your section, so just keep that in mind. Um, but if you've got any questions, I'm happy to, questions or comments, I have not been monitoring the chat. So let me give up my hosting ability if I can. 
It looks back. like Jerry has his hand up. And thank you, Rachel, for going through all of that. Yeah, I hope it's helpful. Jerry, go ahead. I'm Rachel. I'm Jerry. Yeah. Hey, one of the things that four of us put together and the commission voted to forward to the city was an urban trail. <laughs> and I kind of looked at these, th come on, John. It's just, <laughs> you're right. You're going to hear this till we get one, maybe. So yeah, like Rachel made a lot urban of comments trail, here, trail. you know, what projects are dear to our heart? And so Rachel, this is one of mine. And you mentioned a lot of, you know, things here that I thought was kind of interesting. You talked about people want a nice place to live, you know, and uh, I really like living in St. Helens. I think if we had an urban trail, it would be better. Uh, but it's, but we all want a nice place to live. You talked about safety and health. I think if we had, you know, an urban trail, that would be a safe place for people to walk, to visit stores. We, we've got a whole handout on on the urban trail. Also, I think, you know, it would, we would have a higher quality of life if we had a trail. And I think it would promote St. Helens. We've, and you've talked about economically, you know, health, safety, economically, because there are people who go on the internet who look up places to go walk. There's people that, that visit the city in boats and they come up and they want a place to walk their dogs or to go buy something. There are people that go to St. Helens, excuse me, let's try that again, that go to Sand Island in the summertime who come over and would probably like to stretch their legs a little bit. So I think, you know, economically and healthy is safety. Uh, tourism, you know, I don't know how big of a tourism event it would be, but there would be people who would come here. Um, so, you know, you were talking about services the city promotes. And I, the next time you have a questionnaire, this is the, you know, the Trails and Parks Commission, but we really don't have a whole trail system that's connected together. We have bits and pieces of trails. And one of the things uh, a subcommittee attempted to do, or we did do, I thought, was uh, we, we put together really a nice trail. Now, could there be trails that come off of that? Yes, but so Rachel, uh, yeah, I would really like to show you a handout on that and maybe get you up to speed on that so that when you have meetings with people and you talk about livability and safety and health and economic growth, you could maybe mention a trail. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Jerry. And, um, and looking at the, uh, the little connector that's just, what are we calling it, the Fifth Street right of way? That's not a very kind of sexy name, but uh, what a cool opportunity and what a great way for folks to traverse the bluff and go up through Knob Hill. Like it's just, it's really beautiful. And I know of the idea to connect more trails around the city. Um, well, Rachel, uh, the, the trail that we, we started, it started at basically at the city courthouse, mm -hmm. went down the river, it went up, it went through five or six different parks. It made a figure eight and there was two loops to it. One went up uh, Gray Cliffs and it went through Godfrey Park, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a, a figure eight park that was a little over two miles long and hit five or six parks. That's wonderful. I can't wait to learn more about it. And also as we move forward with strategic planning and having a strategic work plan, you know, bump it up your priority level and make sure the council really hears that. I know you've got a wonderful engaged counselor here. So, you know, the more we can get things in the work plan and get it up that priority list. Let's do it. Gary, there are a lot of comments too in there about trails and just the open comments that are in the packet. So if you look through that, you'll see trails mentioned quite a bit too. So I think yeah, apparently the results. I tried to open that up today and I must have not have got it open. Okay. You know, there's been talk of a trail all the way from Trojan, or what used to be Trojan, down through St. Columbia City and St. Helens, onto Scappoose, and then over the Crown Z Trail to Banks, which makes one heck of a, of a trail system if you can do, ever do that. I don't see it happen very soon, but uh, someday it might be possible. You never know. 
Um, another thing that I thought was interesting, Rachel, in the results is about the number of parks that people are aware of. So it, it leads me to believe that we have some work to do as far as um, getting awareness out on some of our smaller parks um, that maybe aren't as used and could be. So I don't know if there's some kind of opportunity for city staff to start kind of promoting some of those smaller parks. Um, maybe we could do like a park of the month or something like that it would be kind of interesting to get awareness out there and then see what happens in next year's survey if that goes up. That is a great idea. I really like that. Great I'm idea. so happy about them. And then how many do you know of? It was like our yeah. developer was really kind of sharp around four, five, and six. It's like, oh, let's, yeah, let's everybody go outside. <laughs> yep. That, that's that's, a, why that's a super idea to have. The, great idea. Here's, here's another one that we could combine arts and culture with uh, the parks and have arts and culture do different activities in different parks. So that's a a good way to get acquainted with a park uh, when you have an activity there. So I like that. Yeah, and also we've got someone in the room who's taken it to the street now. Shauna going out to different parks and, and engaging with families there. So we've got some really good opportunities. That's great, Counselor, thank you. And the scavenger hunt piece, I think, will help with that awareness too mm -hmm. that was done last month because there was a lot of features of different parks that people likely didn't know of. And Howie, think, you had your hand up. Yep, I think it'd be really neat to get more copies of that brochure that we had printed up, uh, only 100 copies of, and get more of those out, because that's a great way for people to learn about our parks, to have a little, you know, brochure that's in their hand that's listing the parks that we could start putting down at things like 13 Nights on the River, or maybe some of our parks we could try a little uh, box on some of our kiosks where somebody could pick it up to see what other parks are available to them. You know, yeah, right so. now, I think the concern with that would be COVID is we're not really, we probably wouldn't be handing stuff out, but maybe we could share it digitally and get that out there. Um, so people have a digital copy until we're able to start having events and passing out brochures again. I don't know if there's anything bad about brochures being passed out, is there? No, I think she's talking about like, groups of people getting the brochures and stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah. So I just like to see more of the parks for sure out there again. <laughs> yeah. Because is there any of those left? Is there any left city hall? Does anyone know or anything? Or there, what there, happened? I don't know. There's only a very few that are up at the front counter for people to um, get. And they cost almost a dollar a piece to print. So just oh, keep wow. that in mind. Not quite, yes. but just about a dollar a piece. So are we thinking of another run? I've heard different versions of where that money would come from, or we have comes to right comes it. right from the parks budget. You know, because I still think that's one of our best ways to publicize our parks is having that brochure out there. That might be an opportunity for regional partnership too, with maybe Columbia City or the county or something. Maybe we can partner up. Mm -hmm. Jerry, you've got your hand up. I do. Hey Rachel, mm -hmm. I that I think the idea you came up with a park of the month. I think that's a great idea. It's uh, not my idea, long, but it's a good one. <laughs> as, oh, excuse me, Carmen. As long as <laughs> Carmen, I think it was a I good don't idea. Care. <laughs> I wrote just wrote down schedule a meeting with with Rachel on my piece of paper here, and I had Rachel in my mind. But I think that's a great idea. It's a great idea. Um, as long as I don't have to do it. So, and I don't know how busy, you know, Crystal is with the city, but I know she used to be, you know, our communications director. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would be nice if she could, you know, put together maybe just a short little article. I mean, it would, you know, she could probably write one up pretty quickly, you know, and, and maybe just, you know, and every one of them just have all the parks listed and say, this week we're featuring this park. And this is, you know, I, I think maybe we should, maybe next meeting, uh, Put that, Sherry, can we put that on the meeting schedule for next meeting to talk about that? A park of the month? Sure, I can put that on there. Let's put that on there for next month. Great. 
Any other feedback from anyone before we move on to the next agenda item? All right, thanks again for joining us, Rachel, and sharing all that information. Thank you for the invite. I really appreciate it. And thanks yeah. for your good work. All right, next on the agenda, we have athletic field use process. And there was a document included in the agenda that has all the details of this new process. Sue, did you want to speak to it or do we need to make any motions related to it, do you know, or was it just for our review? Just for your review. Um, okay. Yeah, I, the only thing that I wanna maybe make sure everybody is aware if they read through it is that it does have a methodology to favor local groups for field reservations. Does anyone want me to share my screen and I can just show, I'm, you're not gonna be able to read it all while I share my screen, but I can at least share that page if people are interested. Otherwise you can review after and provide feedback after. Thoughts? All right, I will not share. <laughs> um, and feedback goes to, goes to Matt, is that right, Sue? Um, yeah, that would probably be the best, uh, most efficient way. I mean, you're welcome to send things to me and I can forward them to him, but he's the one that um, basically took another municipality's program and, and kind of um, customized it to, to us and to some of the requests that we've had from some of the user groups. So this is the quasi-custom uh, policy. Awesome. I read through it and it looked really good. Um, yeah, just for everybody's um, just high level, the four, there's a four step tier group. Um, and so tier one would be city programs and contracted events. Tier two is St. Helens School District programs and events as governed by the IGA. Tier three, tournaments and in-city teams and organizations. And tier four would be out of city teams and organizations. So a lot of good information in there for everybody to review. Any questions or concerns before we move on to updates from Doug? Well, on a, you know, I've had a problem today with computers and I didn't get the agenda out. So, uh, I mean, I didn't get a chance to take a look at the agenda. It's on the agenda today, it should have been, that we choose playground equipment for McCormick Park. Is that there? It's, there is a, let me scroll back up. It's, it is McCormick All-Inclusive Playground Equipment. Oh, perfect. And I was challenged by the mayor, the Parks Commission was challenged by the mayor to get this done on this, uh, at this meeting. He says, we need it by such and such time so we can get it ordered and get everything going and whatever. And uh, I think the staff was asked to provide the Parks Commission with uh, various uh, uh, plans or various concepts of playground equipment. Did that happen? Didn't we look at that a while back? We looked at it a while back, but we have the MOTA funding that we're waiting on. I have a meeting with MOTA. It was supposed to be last Friday, but it had to get moved to this Thursday to talk to them about how we go about getting the funding and what the next steps are now that the NBA season is over. And then Shauna actually sent a link about a grant from um, game time that has a hundred percent matching potential for a park and so there was an email string um last week between me and some city staff about that and applying for mccormick park to try to get matching funds um sue i don't know if you want to speak to that or shauna anymore and just that it's another opportunity to help boost the the equipment and yes um Councillor Morton, we, the mayor, they did talk about that at the council meeting, but this agenda had already been set. 
Um, we had looked at several months ago, it's been probably close to seven or eight months ago, it was pre-COVID, that FAD had uh, narrowed down to a couple, two or three different options of equipment that this group had reviewed and had tentatively selected something. However, there's also been a large um, um, request to have more community input in the final selection. So the, the uh, thought here was that we would be able to come down to have the Parks Commission select a few different options and especially with the all-inclusive be able to have a wide variety of options available for that and then work with Shauna and Crystal to do some community outreach so that we can get input from the people who are actually be using this equipment and ha especially since we had such amazing par uh, participation in the MODA voting uh, in, in that grant process there, we, we really want to make sure that the community feels connected to what we're ultimately going to install based on the votes that they, that they uh, put in that we were fortunate enough to get that grant. So um, we'll be working on some sort of a community, however we are able to do that right now with not being able to have in-person type of meetings, but some sort of community input so that we can get all these pieces in place and everything will be all ready to go as soon as the, uh, it, the, you know, the weather and all the other elements are ready for us to install this in the spring. Yeah, I think the, I, I think to round that out, that the uh, council is very proactive in this project. We want to see it done, the, the council is uh, unanimous in seeing this done right and done exactly. effectively. And, it, it, and we know it's going to cost money. And we'll find the money somehow, some way, don't worry about it at this point, other than having the staff look uh, forward to getting grants and that kind of thing to help out. But this is something that the mayor says, get that, get those plans ready. And I said, okay, we'll have it on the agenda for, for our next Parks Commission meeting. And he says, good, I hope you can make a decision by then. And I don't okay. think that that's, I don't think that that's possible to make a decision, but this has to get going and it has to be oh, a yes. priority, I think, with the commission to say, okay, this looks really good. We can dream and we can look at something for uh, X amount of dollars, I, if it's 50 or if it's 75 or if it's 100. And are we going to have a mat underneath? I hope so, rather than chips. Yes. Uh, so it's gonna be something that's gonna be quality. And when a mayor gets behind something, uh, he really wants this to excel and really wants it to go. Not only the mayor, but the entire council was behind this. Mm -hmm. And that means a lot. Uh, it's, it's something that he doesn't want to drag out and drag out and drag out. And it isn't as something that has to come before election time because he, he saw there's no one running yeah. against him or against any other councilors. So it isn't a political thing. It's that we really want this finished. Uh -huh. So, so uh, the sooner can I, we can, can act on it, the better. Can I chime in here? Yes. Okay, well, last winter, after you guys approved all the, the, the picked out the one, uh, we had a representative come out. He designed the whole thing. I brought it back to you. You saw the two different choices he had. You picked that one. Uh, it had the mats, fall protection, everything. They said they can add whatever we needed to when the MOTA thing came in to that set, and they were ready to go whenever we made the phone call. But with the COVID and the MOTA thing, that put us all back. So um, they're still waiting on us if we want to go with that route. But uh, I don't know if you want to try and go for grants and start over, we can. Well, I don't think that, I don't think we certainly need to start over, but it's something to build on. 
And like I yeah. said, there's so much flexibility with the with the with the council. Whatever you come up with in terms of monies, uh, I'm. It's pretty much don't worry about it. It's like pick it out, pick what you want, and then maybe we can bring those two dra draftings, those two drawings, uh, to uh, the meeting, uh, uh, our next meeting, and start to talk about the process. And by then, we'll know how much monies are coming from uh, the Blazers. We'll know a lot more. So hopefully, we don't want to get get left behind because the Parks Commission is dragging its feet. I don't think that that is going to be the situation any way, shape, or form with this group of people. Oh, my heavens. I'm just saying that the council's behind you. Let's light a fire and let's get it going. And thank you, Thad, for bringing that up. And hopefully we can review those two uh, uh, drawings or the commission can review the two drawings the next uh, at our next meeting. And if there's any additional well, already, things to talk about, that'd be great. Well, they already yeah. did a review of those uh, plans, Doug. They were all reviewed and gone, and Matt said we had the money to go ahead and do it. But then that's when everything kind of fell apart. So it, I don't well, know well, how you want to proceed from It there. didn't fall apart. I have to agree with it just that said there was more potential to make it bigger and better and uh, all of that with, yes. the, with grants being possibilities. So... Uh, I think my next, I'll, I'll report back to uh, to the council that we need one a little more time for one Sue's idea for community input, and that should wow. be streamlined, I yeah. think, and uh, and and then going forward with everything else. So I don't want to say I don't want to do kind of a wham bam kind of approach, but uh, we don't want to be the 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 committee that is kind of like, oh, what are we doing with this? So uh, as soon as we can get a recommendation, uh, and I think after next, after our next meeting, I would really like to see that happen. Uh, it gives us a month, uh, it gives the staff a month to prepare and to do their due diligence and uh, for us to kind of think about it. And in the meantime, if we have emails from the staff to get to you to kind of ponder over uh, newer ideas of what can happen with uh, uh, helping facilitate and uh, increase involvement and in what's already there with with that group that Thad has talked to, uh, then so be it. But uh, they, it's, it's really important that we get this done so that we have it all in place by the spring and it can all happen. So I know just by doing projects that it takes a long, long time. And uh, the, the, the planning stuff, so, so that's my report. It's just, a, it's just a, 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 a pep talk, I guess, if nothing else. So uh, uh, I think we're all in the right direction and this is gonna be very exciting to go forward with and the council is behind it uh, to pick up any loose pieces. So Thurman, uh, I I, I guess I have mixed feelings about what's being said, that there's a rush to get this done, but there's also a need to get it right. And I think if you want to get it right, we need to take the time that's needed to get the community input. I think us using the same model that we picked out before the MODA thing existed, before it was decided that this was going to be all inclusive, I think is short-sighted and I think we need to think of this playground as all-inclusive and that that doesn't mean necessarily sticking with the same thing that we picked at the beginning of the year and just adding pieces to it. I think it means looking at it holistically as an all-inclusive playground. But so that's are, my uh, that's are, feedback. Are you suggesting we could go to the uh, back to the manufacturer of the, the one one we did pick and see if there's additional things that can be added on or expanded or this whole different playground or I think it's worth looking at looking at what we chose again and looking what else is out there as far as all inclusive playgrounds go to see what the options are and presenting that maybe in a, a special session or something like that where we can invite the community to come and get feedback because everybody rallied behind it and this was when COVID was hitting 
everybody kind of came together and voted for that funding. And I think it's really important to show that we're going to listen to the community and maybe no one will show up and no one will provide feedback and then we can make the choice. But I know I can't speak um, for what features are most important for an all-inclusive playground. And I think we need members of our community to step forward and help with those decisions. Yeah. So that's my two cents. Jerry has his hand up. Go ahead, Jerry. Sometimes I get easily confused. <laughs> so I, I'm, a, I'm a little confused right now. So what I'm hearing is last time I think, Thad, you brought us several choices. Is that correct? Yes, I brought several, more than several, a whole stack of choices. You okay. narrowed it down to a few, and then we found what was viable and what we could do, and then you narrowed it down to there to the final one. And I have still have those in my, or two of those in my, the two final ones in my office. Okay. I mean, if you remember, we spent months on this. Oh, no, I remember that. So, so <laughs> I'm still confused. I'm still easily confused. So, Carmen, since you're, you know, the chairman person, so are we going to have Thad bring us designs again that he gets out there and we kind of start that no. process over again? And then we will select two or three, we, you know, after we have a discussion, maybe we have two, maybe we have four, maybe we have three, whatever. And then you want to have a, a, a meeting where the community comes in and makes that choice. So are we going to kind of start over again from the beginning? Are we going to take the, the ones that the two or three we picked last time, review those? I mean, I'm a little confused on what what process we're going to go through here. I think it's up to all of us to decide. My suggestion would be to take what we've already picked. Um, it's been a long time since we've looked at it, look at it, see if, if it does allow for inclusive play. Um, and if it doesn't, maybe we look at some other options and see if other options make sense to consider or if it makes sense to add on to the existing structure that we picked. Um, to, to allow for inclusive play, but part of the MOTA grant was to make this an all-inclusive playground or components all-inclusive. And so I think it's important that we we step up and do that. So Carmen? Yeah. I think I think the one we narrowed it down to was if I remember correctly, you could add on to it if we got more money. So it was like this base set, right. and then it had additions that we could add on eventually. So maybe we just need to re-review it. I might, and I might it's, it's, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't remember the one that we picked. It's been so Me long neither. since we've looked at it. Jerry? Yeah, they said we could add other components to it. Um, just They would just have to know what components to make the fall protection bigger and the area bigger, you know, to all the infrastructure for it. You know, I thought that was one of the reasons we picked it is we could add on to it. Jerry. So when when we talk about inclusion, and, and I'm all for inclusion. I mean, I think we need to. So are we talking about physical and mental um, people that have physical and uh, mental handicaps that can still use this? Are we talking about where it's for a wider range of, of people to use, you know, from two or three years old up to, you know, early 20s or even old people like me? So, and then, so what does inclusion mean? And number two, I, I would like to, we, I'd like to, to task Thad with, if, if we're going to review it again, have Thad bring us some things that we could use to upgrade the choices we made to, in, to increase inclusion. So first of all, what does inclusion mean? I don't, um, Shauna, I know that you've done, you've been sending a bunch of links and I think you can probably describe um, kind of what you've been seeing that's out there a little bit better. 
Yeah, so the feedback that I've gotten from the park users and um, being in other parks and recreation meetings is playgrounds that are inclusive are ones that don't just add on features to it. It's one that you could use the entire playground. So a lot of them aren't even like as tall as what the playground is there. They're more spread out and have different things that the kids can do. Um, and so inclusion means for any age and any kind of developmental or intellectual disability that um, you would be able to access that that playground equipment. So it's not necessarily like one big structure that has, you know, slides that only certain be able to climb up and do it's like a, an all inclusive so it's not like oh my kids who have a developmental disability can only use the swings here but they can't use the other part of the playground it's to make it all inclusive and and there's several in Oregon as well that are and they're really fun playgrounds I don't know if you remember the spinny wheel that used to be at um, McCormick Park they have things like that but it's more secure and safe than the one <laughs> that was there when they took out um, and then the grant funding so I was kind of new to um, knowing that a playground was already picked. So when I had sent that grant funding information through um, the organization that does playgrounds and they match 100%, but it's through their organization that you would get that park. So say we came to them with 105,000, they would match the 105,000 100% and then you'd have 110,000. And so when I had sent that, that was just like a, you know, like, oh, there's this opportunity without knowing all this other stuff that's going in it. And with the all access and all inclusion um, monies from the MODA, I think it's really important that we listen to our community on, on what that looks like, because there's several parents that come to the events in the park that their kids can't climb up to the slides on McCormick and go down them safely for whatever reason. Um, and or do the monkey bar thing, just having things that everybody could play on, um, I think is, is important as well. So did that make sense, Jerry? Did that answer your question? Yes. And I still like, you know, you and maybe you and Thad get together and look at some of these things and bring some choices to the, the, the trails and parks commission next meeting. Yeah, I would love to help however however I can. I don't have littles anymore, so I know I don't know a lot about that from a parent perspective, but I just know from hearing the community what they what they're looking for and would really help the MODA grant money and the other stuff. I think that a lot of people and you guys know have a big misconception of how much stuff costs as well. So when we got the grant and it was like 25,000 people are like, whoa, this is going to be an amazing new play structure and stuff. And then once you start <clears throat> breaking that down, so I think the more community input that, look, this is what we can get for 25,000. Do you want this or do you like this better? And then they have a better understanding. And we know sometimes this community can be very opinionated if things aren't done a certain way or if they don't feel like they were listened to. And, and so just kind of getting ahead of that. So it's like, no, this is what you guys said we wanted type of thing. So yeah, I'm more than willing to work with that. And, and um, the grant application is super simple. Carmen's almost got it done. It, I think by October 1st, and it sounds like it's a pretty, um, is when you have to have it in by, and it sounds like it's a pretty short decisioning time frame. And so, you know, if they say, hey, yeah, we can match you and we'll give you 105,000 towards a playground, that could be pretty substantial from a park park, I think. The other benefit of the Moda piece too, and I don't know what this is going to look like with COVID, but when we do get the park in and we have kind of the opening of that park and the new equipment, they, before they used to plan like a big event where their staff would come and really make a big deal out of it. And so I think getting that community involvement will also like get the excitement up for that too, like watching it get built and just, I don't know, I think we have a really good opportunity. other thoughts or feedback about this so so Carmen are we going to put it on I know that Doug wants us to do this as quickly as possible right Doug so well that's my that was that was my can you hear me my yes unmuted. we can hear you yeah so that was my point is is that the, we start talking about that on the council and the mayor goes 
Oh my gosh, the, the Blazers are going to come here and make a big deal out of this when, uh, when it opens up. And we can't be late on this. We can't be wait late until, you know, in through the summer or whatever. And we both know, the mayor and I both know how much time it takes to do a project. It goes on and on and on, and there's always setbacks, and there's always this and always that. So I'm just thinking, okay, where are the plans? And we I had already had the plans, but I didn't have them. I, I was kind of a loss of words of where the, where we, where the Parks Commission was at in doing this. And it's got to be between the Parks Commission and the staff. The staff needs to be active city. and you folks need to be reactive. And I really like what uh, uh, Carmen is saying about the community input. We can combine that, we can combine that all together and not string it out until January and February. That's what I'm worried about. So that's why the, that's why the pep talk, okay? It isn't like, it isn't like, okay, we've just got to make this thing happen and happen fast. We've, we've got to pick up the pace a little bit, I think. So that's my, that was my comments. Uh, I, 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 I told the mayor that we would go forward with it. And I, I feel very strongly that uh, what's the talk that's happening now is really going to help initiate that. Thank you. Sorry, I went on mute. Uh, Jerry, did you have something else? Well, so Sherry's there. So can we get this on? So we can have Sha Thad and Shannon next time give us a presentation and hopefully we can make a, a decision on two or three and do that at the next meeting. And then Carmen, then, you, then we can move forward on the community part after that. Yeah, I think that makes sense if that's okay with Shauna and Thad to move forward with that. Yeah, and John? I don't have as much time as I had last yeah, year. Yeah, I was going to say, personnel that we, maybe we could do what Jerry suggested, but move it up a little faster rather than wait till our next meeting, have a, a special parts commission meeting and go look at what we have already looked at and see what we need to be instead of waiting a month to, to get to that same spot, get there in between. And then maybe we can get to the council a little bit sooner within within five weeks or so and 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 then you're ready to go with with the planning and that figure out the funding for it i think in my perspective knowing what the moda is doing so carmen's has a meeting with them so once we find that out as well um i'll with that to look at the other park plans that were already done and maybe they have grant opportunities through that agency as well that we can talk to them or matching something you know and letting them know what we're interested in doing and if we you know have a hundred five thousand dollars i don't know where 105 came from so that might not be what we have so don't quote me on that and if we say hey we have this what can you add to this piece of the pie and then see if we can get something a little bit more elaborate or or more all-inclusive so yeah i'm willing to do that that i know you're so busy so any time that you want to meet just let me know and and i'll make that work for us to do and sue if, if you want to be a part of it and carmen and i know jenny was um talking with us as well because she writes a lot of the grants and everything so yeah i just want, i think you know this is going to be our equipment for the next however many years and mccormick's such a fabulous park that's so well used that to have a place that there that's just a wow factor because that veterans plaza is amazing the walking trails are amazing of course that we could just really be amazing over there well thank you guys and maybe we can do stuff by email too if there's anything that needs to be looked at or if people need to review things ahead of the next meeting so we can kind of hit the ground running. So um, it is 530. So I am going to jump on to the next item on the agenda, which is rec program. Shauna, do you have any other updates to give for today? Um, so the only updates I have is we're going to put a new story trail in or a new book in, on the story trail at McCormick Park, I believe on October 1st, and it will be kind of 
kind of a fall Halloween-ish type of a story. Um, and I'm just really looking for opportunities for funding where we could do some permanent story trials. And of course, I'll come to you guys way ahead of time to let you know where we'd like to put those. But those have been very popular if you haven't been able to go to them. They're over at the McCormick Park and you turn left like where the camping area is. And then it's a book that progressively goes down as you walk through um, the little trail there. So we have lots of families that are taking part of that. Um, I met with um, Paul, who's on the call, about the bike. So we went through each bike and took a look at it to see what kind of maintenance it needed before we could get it out to the public. There's some that look like they're in really great shape and we'll just have to do some tune-up stuff and wipe downs and some air in them and some other ones need a little bit more TLC and some of them might not make it back out into the public. Maybe we'll steal some parts off of them. So that project is going to be progressing um, here soon. And um, Carmen mentioned that we had the scavenger hunt. So that was through a grant that I got from the Blazers for $10,000 to bring um, activity, active play to the community. Um, so I did a scavenger hunt. That was a um, app that the um, people were able to download and it got them, I got them to all the different parks. And so they went over to, Sa or not Sa Island, Sand Island. Um, Dalton Lake, Nature's Park, we had 30 families that were active in this scavenger hunt. We had, I think, about 70 that signed up, but 30 that were really active in it. Um, and so they got to explore a lot more parks than they ever knew that we had. And um, every week I had a challenge that they go take a garbage sack to each park and pick up the garbage and send a picture in. So you got to snapshot the picture and, and send it in. And then I think that your guys' idea about doing some sort of park campaign is amazing. And that's something that I've had on like my vision board type thing is, you know, once a month having a different park where maybe a video is taken, maybe even like if we have anybody who does like the drone stuff or something and we can talk about like, hey, if you are going to have a wedding, this park is amazing to have a wedding at or if a birthday party or that sort of thing and really advertise what great spaces we have out here for our community. So I am more than willing to work with Crystal on what that looks like um, because we have such amazing space that a lot of people don't know about. I've lived out here for the past 20 years and there was parks that I was like, oh, where's Civic Pride Park? And then or is it Civic Park over by the pool? So we went over there and did that and then the Walnut Park. Um, so, so many things. Um, and then we're gonna just continue doing our activities in the parks right now. We're so thankful that they're available to the rec program and the library to use and get the kids out into. And then lastly, before everything COVID hit, the St. Helens Police Department had asked me to take over the trunk or tree activity that they did on Halloween. Mm -hmm. and um, after much thought and just really like researching, I came up with a drive through boo, it's called. So it's going to be behind the recreation center in that big parking lot down there where we'll have um, different booths set up where cars will drive through and see the booths. And so we'll have people dressed up and waving at the kids. And at the very end, we'll hand out one activity bag to them. It will be a ticketed event, unfortunately, just because of COVID. And we got to make sure that we're staying within guidelines, but we're going to keep the pricing really, really low, like $2 a car or a dollar a car, just so we know that they will hopefully show up and um, do that. So if you guys would like to have a booth there, uh, we would love to have you and it will be during the day so that you can still do, you know, festivities with your family if you want. So it'll be from noon to four on Halloween. And we just ask that you dress up and that you bring um, stuff to hand out and we'll collect it all and then hand out one thing at the end. So hopefully we can get the kids to have some smiles on their face with everything that's going on. So lots of other things I'm planning, but I won't go over all the, that stuff. Um, but if you ever have any questions for me or um, any of that, just let me know. My, my email is always open and I really appreciate this uh, commission and all that you guys do. And Paul, I really appreciate you coming out the other day and going through each bike with me while we figured out what was going on with them all. Was you, was you able to put together a little spreadsheet or something? That is on my to-do list. Oh. My actual, my son and his wife and um, my granddaughter are staying here since Friday because of the smoke. So it's been different having a one-year-old in the house. <laughs> I'm like tired. I like took a little nap earlier. I snuck a nap in. <laughs> so yeah, but that is on my to-do list this week. <laughs> 
All right. Just let me know the next steps on it. What more you got? Thanks for all you're doing, Shauna. That's a lot. Shauna, That's awesome. If you have a bike to donate, where do you take it? Well, we haven't quite opened up for other donations. These were the surplus in the police department. Um, one of my goals is to start a program like that, Jerry. So I will keep you posted on what that looks like. Um, if there's a bike to donate that is in good shape or we won't have to put a lot of work into it, if you'll just email me, we can talk more about what that looks like. The only thing is, is they're all in the recreation gym right now. And I'm trying to get that cleared out in case we can start opening up for activities soon so I don't want a bunch of bikes there in case we're going to start opening but if you have one that you just need me to push out to the public let me know. I do. Awesome. Um, maybe we could do Howie going back to your idea about the getting the parks brochure out maybe we can make that happen and go in the packet or the package of stuff for the drive through booze. That'd be neat. That'd be neat. Um, and then is anyone on the commission interested in manning a booth from noon to four on Halloween for that? I won't be able to, but. I could probably help out the last hour. Okay. What day? Halloween, whatever day that is this year. <laughs> I don't know. It's on a October Saturday. 31st. Yep, it's oh. on a Saturday. I think Paul was trying to talk. Paul, will you, are you, do you want to do a booth for Barlow Bikes and, and you're on mute. You're muted. If I'm not working, I'll do it. Like, <laughs> okay. I'm just, <laughs> so, <laughs> now I got to have a mask and some protection. I'm about to come out. I did it last year, but I'd like somebody else to to try that. It's fun. It's fun. And we have the we have the banner now too. So we can get that yeah. to you. So if anyone's all interested. All social distancing so there won't be like little kids coming up to the booth. They'll have to stay in their car. Um, and so it'll be kind of like a reverse parade type of film and encourage them to decorate their car and um, some other things. And then only one bag at the very end will be handed out. So it's not like they'll be collecting from each booth. I think you're unmuted now, Paul. Yes, uh, I was on some weird, uh, yeah, setting or something like minimize windows. I've never seen that. <laughs> all, I, all I seen was a little min a minimized window. Um, yeah. So noon to four, you said. Yeah. So the event will be from one to four, but we'll set up at noon. Start. Like what we, I do kind of what we did similar to that other time that we did something down there. We just kind of set up a tent outside or whatever. Yeah. So we'll just be in the back parking lot, that big gravel parking lot oh. back. Okay. Yeah, and just um Okay. Yeah. 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 We'll sure. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everybody. Um, let's see. Let's keep moving on the agenda. We've got we already covered McCormick Park, so we'll jump to master plan list editions if anyone has anything for that. I just want to say we're working on page 32. And uh, so we could have that next month if you'd like to have that by then. Making some changes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be great to talk about it next month. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Lynn. Mm -hmm. um, and then any other business or discussion items that folks want to talk about today? Probably just want to bring up real quick, uh, we're hoping that COVID will stay away enough that we can have our fall work party at Knob Hill Nature Park. Uh, we're hoping to get a bunch of uh, plants from the grant that we got from the Portland Garden Club that we've already been starting to talk to a local nursery about what we can buy and stuff. So hopefully that will still all remain open. We'll socially distance and luckily planting is something I think that's very easy when you're out in the woods to so socially distance. And I think a lot of it's going to be on the, uh, along the new trail that's been built on the fifth street right away. So that that's going to be coming up there. So that's about all I've got for now for the long meeting we've had. <laughs> yeah. I'll try to keep it short. <laughs> Oh, one thing. Uh, Dalton is, uh, the Friends of uh, Dalton Lake Nature Preserve are uh, going in with Solve, 
and they're having a cleanup a work party on the 26th of September. And that is um, 9 to 12. So not only are they going to collect garbage, but they're going to work on the trails as well. What was that date again, Lynn? Uh, September 26, from 9 to 12. Which entry? Uh, which entry? Uh, the north end. North oh. entry there, the main entry there. Okay. Could you send out a reminder on that to us, Lynn? Sure, sure. Thank you. I'm kind of wedged and I can't get up and go write it on my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have one other question for you, Lynn, about the benches um, that you said were donated for Dalton Lake. Are there mm -hmm. one or two that have been donated? Well, there's two that's been donated. Uh, they have one at Public Works and the other one that they're going to be bringing it, I think, over to Public Works soon. Oh, okay. So, uh, Kathy contacted me just before we went on vacation and she was going to bring it over to Public Works, but I think she was going to wait till we got back. Awesome. Thank you for clarifying. All right, it is almost 545, so long meeting today. Anything else? Did they need my number or anything for like the Halloween stuff? Yeah, actually, I'll get your information from Carmen or and I'll email you the little form that we'll need to fill out so I have it on, on file for you guys. Okay, we're far enough out. I should probably be able to do it. So. Awesome. Thanks, Walter. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, um, with all that, thank you, everybody. And I will go ahead and do meeting adjourned. All right. Good, Good work. Everyone stay safe. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Over.